everyone welcome we are so happy to ha to have you here welcome welcome to our session today staying relevant embracing new technologies um very very happy to be here my name is elizabeth mcdonald um i am a career coach for baobab and i am <laughs> I'm very happy to be hosting this webinar. And as we get started, if you can go ahead and put into chat where you're joining us from. And if I can have Angela, our master technology person, share the screen so we can get started with our presentation. We have people from Nigeria, Ghana, Phoenix, of course, and I am from Connecticut, Kenya, Rwanda, Ghana. Night. Welcome, welcome, Ishmui, Richard, welcome, welcome. Hotstam, Senegal, from Ghana. Arnold from DRC, welcome, welcome. Amos from Benin, welcome, welcome. Cameroon, awesome. Nigeria, welcome, welcome. From Ghana, a lot of people from Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, excellent. So happy to uh, to have you here. If you could, as these keep putting them in, let's come to our next slide, Angela. So we have a we have this is going to be a really interactive session because it's changing so fast, and we want to know a lot about you so we can help tailor and customize what we're saying to you and your needs. So we have a poll for you, and if you could put in the poll for us. If you are a student, and people are also putting in chat, thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to know if you're a student or not, so we get a sense of our population. Interesting. All right, excellent. So can we go to very, very good? So it looks like about a third are students and two-thirds are uh two-thirds are not. We can see that. Let's come to our next poll. Let's come to our next poll. Um, good, are you using AI in the workplace? Again, a yes, no, we're dying to know this. It's such a, it's such a new technology. Boy, about almost 50-50, slightly more no, slightly more no. We're seeing 60, 60% oh, no and 40%. Yes, let's come to our next poll. How many hours have you spent using generative AI? How many hours? One to five, six to 10, more than 10. How much experience do you have with the generative AI? Wow. So most are saying about one to five hours, some with six to 10. All right, but most of you just about one to five. Excellent. Let's come to our next poll. Let's come to our next poll. Which best describes your view about AI? Which one? What do you think best describes your view? It's a threat to your job. It'll help you do your job. Both are unsure. All right, we got about most of you are saying it is going to help you do your job. We get most of you are saying it's going to help you do your job. Let me share the results with you. And last one, do you think AI is good or bad? Very interesting, very interesting. So most of you are saying it's good. Just one, per just one person is saying it's bad. The rest of you all say it's good. <laughs> you I know it's funny. You guys are 
Optimus. Let me share the results. Very good. All righty. All right. So today is really going to be a conversation. It's going to be very, very interactive. Let me show you what we have. First, we're going to give an African context for our conversation. We're going to talk about education, AI, and chat GPT, looking specifically at Otter and the prompt challenge. The third element is going to look at AI overview, friend or foe. Thank you. Next slide, we have two guest speakers, tech guest panelists with us. So happy to have this with us, Professor Denny Leclerc. He teaches cross-cultural communication and global negotiation at Thunderbird. He's very interested in intercultural communication competence and global negotiation. Um, he he's, does a lot of coaching for executive education programs throughout the US and Europe. He's a keynote speaker and seminar leader for various companies such as American Express, US Chamber of Commerce, and Exxon Mobile. He's been published in leading journals in his field, including International Journal of Inter Intercultural Relations, and has been a contributor to readers in communication, authoring a chapter on the impact of global negotiations. He has his doctorate in cross-cultural communication from the Hugh Down School of Communication at Arizona State University. A warm welcome for Professor Leclerc joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Our next panelist is um, Professor Patrick Lynch. He's an AI faculty lead and professor of marketing analytics and leadership at Holt International Business School. And he helps prepare innovative leaders. He's a global business consultant focused on strategies to find service and keep find service and keep companies. He instructs courses in AI and the future of work big data analytics for sustainable development and design thinking for marketing strategy. Um, as a senior executive for Walters Clover Health, a big data analytics firm, he directed the Office of Strategy Management responsible for new product development and cross-functional quality improvements. Wow, he's a, an endurance athlete. I didn't know that about you. Whoa, look at that. Wow, successfully completing Ironman distance triathlons, a Boston Marathon, and the Leadville Trail 100 mountain bike race. Oh, my God. Along with hospital bills and broken bones to prove it. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Let's come to our next slide, Angela. <clears throat> and I'm going to hand the floor over to uh, Professor Leclerc. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm very excited about being here. And I'm so glad to be part of the panel with my colleague, uh, Patrick Lynch. Um, you know, when uh, uh, Professor McDonald asked me to come and talk to you about AI and chat GPT, I was talking to her. I said, well, I'm going to talk about more from the user perspective and what I know about AI and what it does. But I'm not really a... a um, and an, an expert, basically, in what AI is in the big trend. So I'm going to talk to you about more of what I see happening in general. And then uh, Professor Lynch can jump in. And we really want to have a conversation with you. So first of all, I, I just, uh, that's what I want to, to let you know. Now, in my film that I teach, the cross-cultural communication, the global negotiation, AI has come in full board uh, in terms of negotiation. Uh, a lot of companies in the U.S. are using AI and chatbot to negotiate prices. There is no human interaction. Um, for example, Walmart, the, most of their negotiations now, the suppliers at Walmart negotiate with a chatbot, basically. And, of course, Walmart has a massive amount of data that they have kept track of for years. And so... You know, and for, for Walmart, they found that it does two, AI does two things for them. One, it lowers the amount of time that it takes for people to do a negotiation. So a negotiation that, you know, five years ago, two years ago, took them three weeks, uh, not taking them a question of a couple of days. And the most interesting part of the research was done is most suppliers who work for uh, or try to negotiate with Walmart really enjoy basically negotiating with a AI-generated robot. Because again, it removes all the emotion part of the negotiation. It's it's a, and the, the, against the speed. So that's, that's what um, 
that's how it impacting. Also, most contracts now are reviewed by AI. I mean, lawyers now, you may as well feed the contract into an AI machine and AI would pick up basically the mistakes. So there is a tremendous changes and opportunity in AI. So in order to prepare for this, um, for this presentation today, I, I went online and kind of look at at how Africa, the, the whole continent, you know, kind of like what's happening on the African continent. And if you don't know, I would highly recommend if you can find the this report. It's called Responsible AI in Africa. And it's fascinating because it talks about artificial intelligence in Africa and the emerging challenges. But it also talks about the emerging um solutions and uh, the emerging uh, benefits of AI for the African continent. So in the conversation here, um, what I would like you to do, if you could, I would like you to to kind of like in the chat room, and I would keep track of the chat room here. What What's the conversation in your country about AI in general? I mean, can you type your answers and then we could have professionals in jumping in when we look at some of your answers? Like what's what do you think is going on right now in AI in your home country? So uh, we, we can talk about the U.S., but that's that's not as maybe as interesting as what's happening. And then I would talk to you about what I do in class uh, because that's my world here. But so if you want to go. Yeah. So that's Rinda, Emmanuel, like people are worried about their jobs, which is, you know, very, very common as an answer. You know, I, I the school asked if I wanted to. Uh, to be put in the AI, a, a, a big machine we have on campus where they kind of do, they videotape you doing a lecture so you can be an avatar, um, you know, in general. Yes, you please type your type your answers in the chat room, actually, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, you know, the people that were, can you go back to the slide before, Angela? Thank you. Oh, people are worried about their job. The reliability, so it's it's interesting, yeah. Oh, even less than ten percent even know what it is, what AI is. You know, we can make the argument if if you have any kind of a smartphone, you are already using AI. You know, so you know it's just like AI is already that's the machine we're using. Um, so that you know, like basically, yeah, big companies have started using it. So yeah. Oh, so oh, some people are saying it makes integrity and honesty in the workplace more difficult. People don't know the benefits. So I love it. You know, you have great conversation here to take the best form and use in AI and not using it in the wrong way. Oh, yeah. So it has helped lots of people in their job, most especially freelancer, copywriting, graphic designer. Uh, good luck. That's a great, great uh, uh, usage of it. We'll adapt to AI and improve jobs. Absolutely. <laughs> a couple more, couple more minutes, and then I, I want Professor Lynch to jump in on some of your comments because you you know he can talk to you in length about you know can't worry about taking the world in the future. Yeah. So a couple more minutes. So Professor Lynch, actually, when you see the the comments here that you have about like the fear of the jobs, the fear of the future, uh, people are trying to keep up. Um, you know what? What? What have you seen in general in terms of the trend for AI right now? Because since you are the expert, so what? What have you seen going on? Uh, thanks so much, uh, Denis, uh, Professor Leclerc. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we are we are long we are long term <laughs> colleagues and friends. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I really appreciate the comments that you have shared, and I think that you represent the pattern that we are seeing globally of people being concerned uh, about AI. I was in fact uh, inspired and surprised that many of you had such favorable impressions of AI for using it to enhance your, your job. Uh, my personal opinion is I, I think that that is a good idea to hold on to that. I, I see it very much uh, that it can enhance the future of work. We'll, we'll speak a little bit more about that, but it is natural in most people, many people in most countries have these concerns that it will take jobs that it um, is, a, is a threat or a risk. There was uh, some research done recently asking people about their expectations of AI and other ways of automation taking their jobs. And the majority of people had your similar impressions that it is a, a threat to taking jobs. And I think that we have seen in 
you know, all of us as professionals that are working in this space, while though it is important to have, you know, pay close attention, there is great opportunity here for it to augment what we're already doing well and maybe free up your time. Mm -hmm. uh, few of us would go back to the days where we were needing to do math on our fingers. <laughs> Uh, when we see things like spreadsheets and other ways of analyzing data come into work, what has it done? It's created more work, more, more, more questions, more insights, more opportunity globally. And this is likely going to be the case also with AI. So I see both sides of this, Professor Leclerc, where people have a healthy appreciation that it, we need to watch it carefully. But there seems to be from the opening poll, at least in this audience, optimism, and that is also good to have. So I actually say, Patrick, since you were talking about jobs and expectation, I mean, in, in your in your experience, I mean, what are some of the jobs? Because I talk to students right now, like you, I mean, both in university system, and I, what, what jobs have you seen? What are some of the trends in terms of like jobs that are, that we didn't know existed maybe a couple of years ago and that now, you know, companies are just looking for these. I mean, can you give us an idea? There is emerging research on this because it is happening so quickly. As we have seen in the chat, many are just becoming aware of this in different countries. And so this is preliminary, but I'll share what both the World Economic Forum and a number of uh, think tanks that are looking at uh, job roles. There is no surprise that the future of work is likely to be technical. So having some technical acumen with working with data or coding or uh, AI directly is probably smart. And many of us will touch AI the same way that many of us now have acumen working with data through spreadsheets or other kinds of analytic tools. But the surprising thing, Denis, and I know that you will appreciate this as a professor of negotiation, we, we still matter. Our human skill, our social emotional skill, to use our, our intellect that makes us uniquely human is also on the horizon for more jobs. So it, anything that you can do to flex your creativity, your problem solving, your ability to think systematically about how things are connected, there is a home for us in the future of work. Mm -hmm. Specifically, some of the new jobs that you have asked that were not around in the past, and I know we are going to speak about this, and I'm interested in the chat. Mm -hmm. Have people heard about prompt engineering? Prompt engineering is emerging as a new job that many companies are seeking this skill. And we'll be sharing, I think, some, some mm -hmm. practices on this just later today. Another emerging job, very interesting, is AI ethicist. As we mm -hmm. see AI and chatbots and natural language being used in the workplace and working with customers, we will need people that are cognitive and emotionally connected to what is appropriate. So we are seeing the role of AI ethicist. I mm -hmm. challenge anyone to do a Google search on that. I promise you, it's going to be minuscule before this year, but now you are seeing these roles emerge in companies. Uh, and there is a funny thing. Now there are also roles that are emerging to protect people uh, from AI. Uh, and so you are seeing roles that they 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 call these detox mm -hmm. as if you are, you know, uh, almost addicted to it. So we are seeing roles and they might not be called detox specialists, but they are roles that are protecting maybe work life balance or other things that people need to do in order to stay grounded. And it reminds me, Denis, I know that I am old enough. I won't, I won't, I don't know how old you are. So you might not remember this. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> but I remember in my lifetime when uh, when finally mobile phones were becoming ubiquitous. And we, at the time I was with Accenture, and we did a research how many people were taking their phones on vacation, on summer vacations. Uh, uh, and it, uh. it was the first year or so that that happened where it was a big shift where people were seeing, I am now available and could be connected at any time. And people were maybe not comfortable with that. We are seeing a, another wave like that because AI is becoming ubiquitous and now people want to cocoon and have a space that is separating them. So maybe there are some new jobs that will also emerge to help people stay people. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's great. Oh, thank you. Because you know, I, from from the comments we had, I mean, people are some people are really embracing it, and other people are really afraid of. So I want I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, so, uh, what's the next slide again? Next slide, man. So. This is actually, you know, again, it's the African Growth Initiative. Um, it's done by the Brookings Institute also here in the, in the U.S. It's a think tank and out of Washington, D.C. But just wanted to show you, I mean, again, you can go and look at the full, uh, full report if you're interested. But the fact that it was funded on average, most companies uh, low level of preparedness in the fourth industrial revolution technology. And, and you know, we could spend a whole half an hour just talking about that part because a lot of companies as as what patrick was saying they know they are kind of like interested in it but they don't know how to use it i mean and they don't want yet to put you know a lot of uh money into it but companies have been successful again i mean in my area again it's the negotiation uh they find it a tremendous time saving uh the speed of execution, looking at contracts. I, I have a, I'm doing a program with some colleagues at the law school. And the law schools now, their their whole universe has shifted because it, it, the role of a lawyer is to create a contract. And now you have AI that basically can write a contract in 20 seconds. So the role of a lawyer now is to not do the first draft, but really look at what has been created and add to it. So... So in your own country, so we had people from Ghana, from Nigeria, uh, from DRC, like, you know, think about how you think that your countries, and depending what your company, uh, your country is doing, you know, if you are in, uh, some countries might be more up to providing you the skills, but uh, so the, this is the part to me that is interesting. So I, continuing about the conversation first is like the fear of AI, but do you have, do you have any ideas or any um, comment about how can Africa benefit from AI? So the same thing, if you want to go in the chat, uh, I think the African continent to me is is, is poised to, to play a major role in AI um, mm -hmm. in general because of the infrastructure capabilities and the fact that there is a lot of involvement uh, and be able to part, be part of data centers. I work with uh, Nigeria and Kenya. They are building their space industry right now as countries. And it's all generated on big data. So if you if you want to go on in the chat room again, and if you can give us your idea of like, how can Africa benefit from AI? I mean, what have you seen? So I know some of you have have maybe some fear, but is there any any benefits that you see, either as a student or as a non-student? I mean, if you are a student to me, it's just a, it's an amazing time to be going back to school. Um, you know, it's, it's an amazing time of being able to engage with uh, that new technology. Patrick, I'm old enough that I remember going from, uh, uh, you know, like the overhead projector to PowerPoint. So, you know. <laughs> okay, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I've gone to a massive revolution on that one. <laughs> I remember when I had to push the projector to go to my class because there were only few projectors available on campus. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if you well. so if yes. you want to go into the uh this the chat room right now and tell us how you feel can it give you can you give us some example about how you can you believe that basically AI can benefit Africa can benefit from AI Denny while the participants share their thoughts and ideas uh just building on a message that I heard you share a moment ago uh this this exercise thinking about how AI may benefit Africa or may benefit your employer is a very healthy exercise. And mm -hmm. uh, th this is a, the opportunity that we have to really reimagine our mm -hmm. roles and our contributions at work or an organization or uh, just how we are doing things. And th th it is worth everyone looking at the opportunities of how the tools can be used in new ways because leaders are flummoxed. They are uncertain right now themselves. This is a recurring pattern, much as the data you had shared in the prior slide. Many companies are curious about fourth industrial revolution, which would include things like adopting artificial intelligence, but they do not know where to start. Mm -hmm. And this is our call to action. Each of us here 
must be here for this purpose. We realize that there is a future that is in front of us. So mm -hmm. to take advantage of that, be a leader, is to think carefully, explore opportunities to maybe see how AI can help. And this is a, a healthy exercise mm -hmm. for everyone to go through. So it's a great question. Yeah, and I think that if I look at like Ferry, for example, is practicing because people are practicing formal business, it would be, be allowing people to be greater systems and better performance. Uh, Edwin is talking about boosting productivity, uh, something like productivity, um, gain indication skills, which I think is such a, and that's from Queen here. Um, I'm going like, to jump in for a second and yeah. just say the. The research on demographic trends is that Africa is going to be a major player in um, what? It, what is it providing like job productivity for the world that it's going to shift from Latin America and Asia to Africa and Africa is going to play a major role in providing the work that the that the world needs done. Yeah, no, it's just I absolutely agree. I mean, again, the, the whole continent, I mean, you might be spotted by countries, but there is a, a capacity because it's a working um in a in in data analysis and i think yeah i totally agree with you so ai we africans can benefit ais through provision of digital skills you know gain education skills that take part of technology revolution task uh, automation we're just gonna uh dorcas you know in school it help with research and writing project it helps make everything fast you know there's a speed of execution that we all can see actually so that company is using chatbot for customer service from uh Envis here just maybe a couple more and then I, I want us to kind of launch uh the conversation on a couple of other issues I'm keeping track of the time here we just I think we have a good conversation but I'm also keeping track of the time so um or improving healthcare through better diagnosis and treatment plans. Donald, that's an amazing application actually of AI here that we are all aware of. Natural resources management, making energy grids more efficient, enhancing, look at that. I mean, it's just, AI can create job opportunities and help in tackling pressing issues like poverty and climate change. Um, it's easier, it's I have a friend of mine at ASU who works on drone. Uh, technology and AI, and actually what he does, a lot of the project he has is going to farmland and the drone, he, he, he has a technology, he has a special type of cameras that, you know, he has the intellectual property for, but he's able to fly the drones over like big chunks of land and pick up the trees or the the plants by plant, basically, that needs more water or in challenge or like have too many bugs. I mean, he can do that in a, in a 20 minutes, basically, he has the health of the whole Film before even maybe the farmers are aware of it, and it's just absolutely amazing. And now he's using the same technology to go underwater. So maybe I can uh, I can build on this example yeah, yeah, yeah. because I'm a, I'm aware of uh, aerobotics, which yeah. uh, I think is based in South Africa as one example. Yeah. They yeah. are using the exact technology you yeah. are speaking of, the yeah. drone technology to uh, in, inspect crop health. And, a, and and find efficiencies for our crops. And this is one of the reasons why Africa could be a leading adopter mm -hmm. and benefit from efficiencies and maybe even make land more productive uh, that previously was not considered because uh, the AI can help uh, in these solutions. So I think it's a good example and, and speaks to Elizabeth, your point on how uh, Africa will be, I think, a, a leading adopter and also a, a leading beneficiary of some of these technologies because it is reducing friction and reducing time uh, to make better decisions, such as for crop health or for some of the environmental topics that others have raised. And, and Ferry, actually, you're raising a very good point about uh, helps help in the fight of corruption between because it will improve transparency in a certain way. So I'm working with two governments, one in Africa and one in the Middle East, and actually they are harvesting the big data to make everything digital. And it's for very for what you just uh, basically talk, uh, you're talking about, which is to, to make sure there is no corruption in the system, that if you are in the justice system, that your file is being tracked, not by a human being who can stop everything or be corrupt, that there is a very clear decision. And I was talking to one of the judge in one of these African countries saying that basically when he provides his verdict, it's sent directly to both sides, um, yeah, digital information. So 
we're moving from AI, but it's all about how do you digitalize and how do you amass, you know, how do you bring all that data in, in very, um, uh, very large amounts. So, no, thank you, Gerald. It, it improved advancement technology in Africa. I'm just keeping track of the time, you guys. So I, I just want to move to move uh, a little bit so that we have a couple more slides that we would like to show you. So thank you for all your feedback. I think it's very um very interesting. So this is actually so I I'm I, I'm a professor right now, and you know at, at my school at Thunderbird, you know some of the faculty were complaining about Chat GPT and the fact students were using Chat GPT. So we have a faculty meeting about it, and to me, I mean I and, and on that level, Patrick and I are totally on the same page. It's like the, the, it's over. I mean the, the 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 students have the function of a professor has to change. We have to be chief engagement officers in the classroom rather than being delivering information. I mean. To me, delivering information, you guys can go on ChatGPT and ask any questions, and you will you will do a good job. My job in the room is to engage people at that human level that Patrick was talking about, that you know, be able to work on that. And so, yesterday, um, when I was preparing for that for that presentation, I said, "Oh, I asked ChatGPT basically, what are some of the usage of ChatGPT in education?" You know, I just like may as well ask the system how I should use it, and it just basically came back. And I also, also, and it will do a conversation about prompting later on, but I asked only for five choices. So I said, can you, I'm a professor at university, can you provide me five uh, steps, five usage of chat GPT in the classroom? So only five, not, not 10, not 20. So it came back and he gave me these five here. Uh, research assistant for a professor, and it's easy to have a student say, hey, listen, I'm writing a paper on this topic, can you go on chat and create a summary? Uh, for all of you here, essay and paper proofreading. I allow chat GPT in my classes. So if there's questions that I know students can find the answer, I tell them, listen, here's the bottom line. You have to show me the prompt. So tell me the prompt, you know, and show me how you came up with it. And it became actually very important because last summer I was working with students on a consulting project. And they showed me some slides and I told them, I said, you went on chat GPT. And they were like, well, what do you mean? I say, because the answer you have in your slides makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> you ask a system to give you an answer and the system gave you an answer, but that was the wrong question. So we, we changed the conversation about what does it mean to, to, to do these kind of brainstorming ideas? Uh, concept explanation and clarification. And you see the, the programming and coding assistant. You see the paragraph under? It's important for students to remember that while ChatGPT can be valuable resources, they came from ChatGPT. So it's a paragraph that explains that basically they should always verify information. It's not my language. It came from the system. I say five things. And then at the end, at the end of the prompt, it gave me these five. And it gave me a lot of details in that. It says, oh, but be careful to, to make sure you verify. And I think, you know, some people who are afraid of chat GPT or that technology is always like, you know, how do we know if it's real or not? And in academia, there's already some major cases where people publish research papers. Uh, there was a case in the UK, like maybe last year, where these three authors published a paper. It was accepted. And after the paper was accepted, they basically sent a disclaimer saying, we did not write a word of that paper. It was all created by ChatGPT, you guys. And it launched in, into a massive conversation about what's knowledge, how is knowledge created in, in the leadership field. So, uh, Patrick, do you have anything you would like to add to, to, to this here in terms of ChatGPT in education? I know you are amazing. Uh, you show me what you did with the students here. So if you want to share what you do in, with the students in your classes, that, that would be a great example. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, the, there's many similarities with, I think, our approach in, in the classroom. Uh, I began seeing chat GPT in the, the fall of last year. By the spring of this year, we were already seeing uh, student, like students were adopting it. And I agree. Uh, it was it was Pandora's box. There is no way that that is getting uh, back close. So we It is a call to action for us as educators, I think, to use the tools uh, in this way. So I think it, everything that uh, you have is all is absolutely in line with, the, I think, the direction that we're going, that it is a, an opportunity for us to use our critical thinking to uh, critique and to build on. 
in my classes, uh, I used it two times so far, one in the sustainability uh, with AI class and also in a marketing class. And the opportunity there is more around immersive experiences for learning. So rather than me giving you a, a multiple choice question, I would rather put you into the role. So in many of my classes now, I'm putting you into the role as an executive at a company. And the company has a problem. The company, it needs um, maybe some market share is being uh, taken away by a competitor. And I encourage the students to use the tools to do research. Uh, so for example, in my summer class, they were doing research on different segments for, for example, millennials or Gen Xers or Gen Zs. And what are the buying trends? After that, then once they identify those trends, they can create now prototypes because the Gen AI is not just a, a language, a natural language partner, but with the imagery and with appropriate prompts, you can create real prototypes that are very convincing that would in fact, I think pass as a marketing deliverable. So we had students creating product prototypes and also uh, even marketing collateral, entire marketing campaigns. So in the past, I might ask a student to describe what would happen, but now I can say, show me what it looks like. And the tools created full marketing campaigns that would really pass as something that a client might use. And for all of those that are on the session today, it seems like most of you are working professionals right now, you're not students. This I think is the opportunity for all to use the tools to innovate to be inspired, to create something. See it as an extension of your own creativity. Unlike search, which it can do, like a Google search or some other search tool, it can do that. But if you set it up appropriately, it can be a colleague, it can be a teammate, it can be a coach. And in this sense, I think that there is a great opportunity for learners, uh, for us as professors to up our game, to build these immersive learning experiences using scenarios and building real prototypes. And then as, as workers, we can bring ideas and show our leaders what the possibilities are, not just in concept, but in fact, here's what it looks like. Now, thank you. That's that's right to the point, actually. I appreciate you sharing that. So can we go, can we go to the next slide, actually? Again, I, I don't want to rush anything. So this is a, an app. So when I was talking to Professor McDonald, when I met her face-to-face a few weeks ago, I was telling her I was using that app to give feedback uh, to students on paper. I, I'd never learned how to type on a computer. I mean, you know, I just like, so for me, typing on the keyboard, you, you know, I just look, if I, I have to look at my fingers, basically. So I didn't learn that whole process, but I discovered that app called Otter. And what Otter does is basically I can dictate any feedback I want to. And it, it's a dictation software, but it, it just do a transcription right away. And all I have to do is copy and paste that into my paper feedback, which is way faster for me to do than actually type the feedback, you know, when you have a 10 page paper. And so I was, I was telling uh, Patrick and uh, Elizabeth, actually, I was, I have a friend of mine. She's really, she loves technology and all that stuff. And she was telling me that order that, that app here, you can even send an outer avatar to zoom meeting. So you don't have to be there. And Otter does all the transcription of all the conversation basically going on. And so there's a lot of technology that can really make, you know, can be more productive. And as what Patrick was saying, can really make our life easier and be an assistant. So I don't have to be in the meeting, but I can participate indirectly. So just a, an example of how AI can really help us work. Uh, in the next slide, Angela. So this is kind of the prompt uh, guy that we were talking about earlier. So... This is kind of like, depending on which website you go to, people say, well, this is what you have to, to find out. But, uh, and again, I, I try, this is kind of a slide I show students. It's like, you know, a, a prompt is critical because this it's a, it's a machine. It, it can go through all the books in the world, everything ever published. But at the same time, you have to provide direction to that search. So it's not like a Google search. It's actually um, much more interesting. And and so, it taught, taught, you know, these are some of the tone, the format, the objective, the context of the call of action. What do you want? I mean, I, I the slides I showed you earlier, I wanted five steps. I, I didn't want five usage. I didn't want 20. If I didn't put a limitation, I don't know how many it would have come up with. I'm sure, you know, at least 10, 12 or 15. So, um, can, Patrick, can you talk about this? Because it's a big, in the U.S. right now, it's a big deal. Like prompt engineers is a buzzword you hear all the time. It's like, oh, my God. You know, students not even in my classes, they are they're driven by people who are data analytics. 
Uh, no, they want to be prompt engineers. So, um, so it's basically, I mean, can you talk to us about what a prompt engineer is and what the buzzword around that whole phenomena here? Excellent point. And it, it, just like anything, there are ranges of what these skills mean. In in a general sense, if you're using a generative AI tool like ChatGPT and you're asking a question, you're you're doing prompt engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are degrees of this where we can really configure the tool using natural language, just our thoughts, all mm -hmm. the way up to using Python code to embed prompts or certain types of prompt uh, engineering for businesses. But I will share a simple example that builds on the excellent uh, uh, five prompt guide uh, slide that you have. And I, I have adopted a similar technique and I encourage everyone to try this. If you are using ChatGPT, the free version or any of the generative AI tools, there are many, uh, you can have it become more of a partner. So mm -hmm. I use three, three ideas and my design is role, goal and pull. The role, make sure that you give the tool a role. For example, in my class on AI and the future of work right now, I've asked the students to make ChatGPT into an industrial organizational psychologist. Wow. You can tell ChatGP, you are an expert in business re-engineering of work. So you set the role. And then you say the goal. The goal is I am a worker. I'm looking for ways to adopt AI into my work. Ask me questions. Ask me questions. This is the poll part to discover things that I am doing that you could recommend ways that I could automate. And what I want to do is that I want to enhance my creativity. I want to enhance my sociability and my negotiation skills and that I want to retain. So help me automate things that are routine. By using the role goal poll method, then the, the tool becomes more of a partner that helps me gain insights to myself. And so this is the, the an approach where prompt engineering, this is an opportunity almost for you to create a software program uh, from these generative AI tools. And it's not just a question and answer search, but more of an interactive experience. Yeah, so thank you. That's that's a very, very important distinction. So the role, the goal, and the poll. So very important. So, and you know, what also I, I love about um, AI is in the chat GPT is because you can practice with it. I mean, it's just a, it's an infinite um, somebody to you, to help you, I mean, it's a, it's a first draft. For example, I I'm writing a book on entrepreneurship, and you can, and it was actually amazing. So I put my my table of contents in ChatGPT. I say, how can I improve the table of content to make it more uh, readable or less academic? And what it came up with was just uh, mind boggling because it was somebody with no judgment who kind of redefined kind of how the book should be set up. And that was such, it, it was a guide, like, you know, no emotion that, you know, the, I didn't give them the content of it. I just gave them, this is my table of content as if right now. And it was interesting the way it changed, the, the way it tweaked the words a little bit that when I read the words, I'm like, oh, that's a much better way to introduce that concept, actually. So, you know, the the role, the goal, the poll, and I'm still, I'm glad, thank you for sharing that framework because I'm still trying to find out how can I really have, um, my answers uh, or what I can looking for. So I took some notes on the role, the poll and the goal. So that's very good. Um, you know, you learn every day. So I, I know to me, I was looking at the tone, the format, but I like also your simple, like simple format. So the next slide, Angela, and I think uh, we will open up for, so we, we like, yeah. I, I will just briefly summarize. I think that I've, I've hit on many of these themes uh, throughout the time this, today, uh, just giving you a summary. Uh, the data are clear. This is not just my opinion, but but I think the survey globally, we will need to continue to be uh, gaining technical acumen. That means working with data or working with technology. We need to be open to that. But the opportunity, in fact, I think that we are on the uh, a renaissance yeah. of creativity that we can use these tools to gain insights uh, for ourselves or for our businesses or for learning that were previously impossible. I don't think it's hyperbole to say that it was impossible to do this. We have greatly lowered the bar. This is a great democratization for access to insights. So take advantage of this. And that means that we want to hold on to what is making us human. And that thing means your creativity, your ability to improvise, your ability to negotiate. 
Secondly, it is your call to action then to use those skills. And this, we talked this morning or today, this morning for me, uh, that you can use it, for example, uh, to create prototypes for uh, new ideas. And so the counsel for, for us, uh, because if you look at it traditionally, I think this statistic is about 60% of the jobs that we are doing now did not exist in the year 1940. And it is likely that these technologies will just continue to evolve. We will see new roles that we cannot yet anticipate. So your call to action is to adapt, adopt, adjust, find ways to incorporate this for you. You might find that uh, a role is going to emerge 12 months from now that did not exist today, that because you are prepared, you'll be uniquely qualified to step into. So embrace this uh, continual learning. And this is a great opportunity now with low stakes to begin experimenting using these tools to create uh, new ideas and new solutions that did not exist. Well, thank you. I don't know. That's a, such an amazing summary here, Patrick. That's I really appreciate. I think we have the next slides, I, I, I believe, um, just to, yeah. So like, if you have any questions now, we have, my time, sorry, Elizabeth, but it seems like we have nine minutes. I want to keep track of the time here. So if you have any questions you want to put in the in the and chat. We have, we have some questions in the Q&A part. You can put them in chat or the question and answer. We have one question from Arnold Joseph asking, why is ChatGPT not available in the DRC? Yeah, that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I think, the, so you're actually raising a very interesting point of the 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 lack of ability of some countries to have access to these amazing tools and they are perceived for whatever reason as a threat to knowledge the fact that knowledge will be able to fly so much faster so i'm sorry i know that it's not it's not available in the yeah. DRC, but because to me you know if you look you could look at it two ways and the the, the one way is putting the entire young people in a deficient learning process at this point so i'm so sorry i know it's mo most likely a political issue than anything yeah. else uh, we have another question from margaret ando she says what other ai tools can she use and if, i'm going to quickly type into chat something that i discovered the other day i think it's called the website is future tools have you guys heard of that no no. It's a crazy search thing that pulls up all the AIs related to what you're looking for. It's called Future Tools. Do you see it? And yeah. you can, so you can select, like, let's say you want, I don't know, generative code. I don't know what you want, text to speech, and you can select free, and then it'll, it'll give it to you. It'll pull wow. for you whatever ones that they have. Oh, that's so you can, yeah, it's a pretty neat one. There's another one if for if for the students out there, or if you have baby brothers and sisters who are in school. Conmigo is one, a new one. That's an an interesting new AI with uh Conmigo, and and generative AI for uh, helping. The, yeah, the Khan Academy. They they have been in the forefront of this. Uh, they had that fun actually they found so i'm sorry to to learn because i he was interviewed actually on one of the podcasts i was listening to and he said that the talking about using ai as a helper to to help students to learn so he has removed a lot of the teachers i'm sorry elizabeth but like the coaches <laughs> ai is able to to understand and help the people understand the concept based on what they have done in the past because AI can say hey we see that for the last two weeks, you have struggled on that mathematic, mathematical equation, whatever. Let's, he has some exercise you can do to help you. It's to help you improve. It's pretty amazing. Um, so wow. I can build a, Elizabeth, there are many of these uh, sites. So I really yeah. appreciate, I love learning myself. So I love future tools. Uh, another one is there's an AI for that is another one. And you can sign up for their newsletter weekly, for example. And uh, it will uh, share a summary of new AI tools that are coming out. So it addresses some of the questions we are seeing uh, from uh, the uh, questions on how AI can be used. The, 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 no one can tell you because this is such a fast moving space. It is like trying to describe what is the internet. The internet is yeah. everything. So you, you should tap into some uh, trustworthy sources. Um, of course, you should be reading carefully what 
permissions you are agreeing when you are trying many of these tools, even free tools. So uh, of course, you know, uh, you you need to use your judgment, but there is a world out there that is worth exploring. So so I, I'm seeing a couple of things actually. I'm picking up on the chat or in the QA. Uh there's somebody who says, um, are there tools that detect AI generated text? Also, do you think AI will limit human innovation and creativity? I'm going to give you an example, actually, uh, to show you something. So last week was a big meeting at ASU, Arizona State University, about AI and um, how to use AI in the classroom. And at the beginning of that conference, so they had all the different people in the depart different departments, they had a presentation from the president of Arizona State University, who basically talked about the danger of AI and all that stuff. And so it was a five-minute speech. And at the end of the speech, basically, the CEO of the company walk on stage and say, everything you saw and heard was created, was generated by AI. There was no, no President Crow, we had to talk to him about it. He said, he didn't write any of these words. And it was just absolutely amazing. So that basically you have five minutes from the presentation. And I was talking to a group of uh, last week. And so I give that to, to the people in, um, in, a, in my group of executives I was teaching last weekend. And one person said in, he, in her company, to know to make sure you talk to a human, she said, what you have to do, you, you have to be quiet and you turn your head on the side and you talk and you go back and you force the other person to do that. He said, because right now the AI is not able, there's something about the video part of AI, it's not able to have people turning their head. So I don't know, but I think it's a it's a great, see that you just created another job, uh, not to win that, it's like how to detect when it's AI. And I know there are some tools working on that. So I don't, know, Patrick, what's your what's your your feedback <laughs> on that? Um, one of the things that both educators and uh, you know others are, are concerned about is you know can you detect when AI is being used for writing in you know in particular. So there was an interesting uh, st study that was uh, shared by a uh, employer that was looking for freelance writers. And they knew AI was available, so they asked for writing samples, and they were uh, encouraging people to show how AI was being used. And uh, they also had another batch where they said, "Don't, uh, we don't want any AI." They were unable to determine the difference between the two groups, and so um, they went to then having the recruits specifically call out where AI was used and, and how they used it, including the prompts uh, that are being used. Not unlike many of us as educators who are requiring students when they are uh, doing that, it's fine not to use it, but you need to show the uh, the critical thinking that went into you know preparing the AI. But uh, I, I'm very wary of these tools. This is an arms race of AI. As soon as there is a tool that is able to de be detecting the presence of it, there will be some innovation on the other side. Uh, ChatGPT itself initially came out with a tool to detect plagiarism using AI and they have taken it off the market. So I, I, I'm very wary of this. I understand that there is a need. I think it is one uh, that is more in the realm of policy procedure ethics uh, is probably gonna have a bigger role on that rather than a, a machine solution. Uh, that is my personal opinion, but it is a, a very fast moving uh, uh, place uh, of, to, for everyone to be concerned. So actually, uh, Patrick, you are answering to my NDI um, question, which was how about the regulation issues regarding AI? And I think that's that's what every, suddenly policymakers are looking at and it's like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I mean, how can we, how are we going to be able to regulate that part? And that's, yeah. And I think policymakers and politicians are so behind, they don't understand the technology. So, but that's my own personal, but it's, it's, it's going to have to happen though. One one caution, even though we've been encouraging people to try, I would be very careful sharing any sensitive company information with these tools, especially the the, the free versions, because um, to be honest with you, I, I, I as a data scientist, I can explain uh, in other detail. Once you have submitted that, if the tool is still learning your company's information, your proprietary information, your IP and intellectual property uh, is somewhere then there, and it's 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 basically impossible to have it unlearn. Uh, this is one of the challenges right now, and maybe we will see this in a coming generation, but uh, be careful. Um, but it is still good to explore. Maybe you have synthetic data or example data that is uh, appropriate mm -hmm. to share. And, and there, I think you can see great value. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Uh, 
Oh, we have one Cruz more. Question. Elizabeth here. We could be talking for a couple of I hours. I know. We could. I, have, I know. We could ask in an hour, but, you know. And I think looking at Africa used for income, I think, you know, just be, oh, yeah. be open and see, you know, be, keep your eyes open for what comes up. I think, Angela, I think we have one more poll. And already people were pretty positive already with the, um, with the, with the, uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, Donald. We wanted to know as kind of as a final thing of if you still think AI is good or bad. We have one more poll up there. Do you want to share with us what you think here? Wow, look at that. Oh, wow, look at that. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're preaching 100%. to the choir. Yeah, we're preaching to the choir here. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you both so much for coming and sharing your experience and your knowledge and your wisdom. So appreciated. We will um, we will share the slides with you and we'll share a link to the um, we'll share a link to the the video recording so that you can watch it. Um, and there's one more thing. We're going to share the slides. I'm also going to share the slides about the demographic trends in in Africa that we see coming. Um, thank you all so much, Angela. Thank you so much for guiding us through this very much. If you have any questions, go on to the Baobab chat. I'll be monitoring it and I'll be posting there, you know, any other stuff I find for um, that I think will be helpful for you. I'll post things there. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you all thank for you. your thank comments you and for chat. Us. Thank you. All right. Thank have you. a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you. You